Welcome to Process Control Design and Practice. My name is Tom Meadowcroft. In this video, we will learn about feedback control. A feedback controller is one that continually adjusts an element of the equipment state, a degree of freedom, to make a measured or inferred element of the thermodynamic state approach and maintain a target value. Most process control courses and books spend most of their time on feedback control and linear control theory, which is why we won't hear. You can find hundreds of books on the subject, a dozen of which are aimed at chemical engineers. So instead, I'm just going to cover a bare minimum, enough to establish feedback control as a tool that we can use. First, some terms. The sensor measures the process variable, or PV, and sends a signal to the controller. The controller output signal goes to the manipulated variable, or MV, which is the degree of freedom. The target signal is the set point, marked SP on the diagram. Next, dynamics. We need to be able to speak about the magnitude of the response of a process variable to a manipulated variable and the speed of that response. There are many different types of response possible, but in practice, we can approximate most of those responses with three parameters. First, the gain, K sub P, is the ratio of the steady state change in the process variable to a change in the manipulated variable. The dead time, T sub D, is the time after the manipulated variable moves and before the process variable starts to move towards its steady state value. Dead time can happen because we don't measure a change until after it's had time to move down a pipe or through a vessel. The time constant, T sub P, is the time it takes the response to move 63% or one minus E to the negative one of the way to steady state, which is to say it is the time constant of a first order dynamic response. This is called a first order plus dead time dynamic model, which can approximate just about any actual dynamics that you will encounter in a real process. There are standard tuning rules for proportional integral derivative or PID controllers that use these three parameters, which you can find in the text. The behavior of a feedback controlled or closed loop process depends on the process dynamics and the tuning parameters of the controller. You can't make a process move further than it is capable of moving, and you can't make it move faster than it is capable of moving. If you try to do so by moving the manipulated variable too violently, you'll make the process oscillate too much and potentially become unstable. That's linear control theory, which again, we won't cover here. The key points that we need to remember as process and control systems designers is what we desire and what we can and can't change. We like the game case of P to be large. So when we're pairing degrees of freedom to objectives, we should try to use a manipulated variable which has a large effect on the process variable. Dead time is difficult to handle for feedback control, so always try to measure your process variables as close as possible to where the change happens, not 100 meters and 60 seconds downstream. Finally, small time constants allow fast and responsive feedback loops. Large time constants only allow slow and sluggish control. What types of process elements make for fast and slow loops? Liquid flow and pressure change almost instantaneously with a time constant of less than 10 seconds. Gas flow and pressure respond quickly as does level in a tank as long as the tank isn't enormous. Temperature response of the exit fluid from a heat exchanger will also have a time constant of less than a minute. The slow and sluggish processes that chemical engineers most often encounter are when we need to control composition or flow in a large vessel. Temperature control of a large vessel, like a stirred tank reactor, 
could have a dead time of one minute with a time constant of up to 10 minutes. Distillation column temperature control from which we can infer composition can have dead times of several minutes and time constants of up to an hour. We generally can't change the process dynamics, but we can design systems that help to deal with slow processes, which we'll talk about in the next video. Feedback control of processes with large dead times is a particular challenge best dealt with using more sophisticated controllers than the simple PID, such as the model predictive controller. That goes beyond the scope of this course. Today's key takeaways are that feedback control is essential to process control and that the labels we need to know are process variable, manipulative variable, and set point. We can measure process dynamics and use those measurements to yield loop tuning constants. The limits of stability and control theory mean that slow dynamics lead to slow feedback loops. Look for a full text exercises, and more videos at chemicalengineeringpractice.org. I'm Tom Meadowcroft. I hope to see you again soon.